I am going to get started. I am Lynn House, and I'm so thrilled you are here tonight. You have probably received an email from me as a confirmation, or maybe from Shannon Hasper, um, about joining us tonight. And we are thrilled um, to have you here. Obviously, as probably every Zoom meeting you go to, people say we wish we were in person. We truly do, because we love our building. We love showing it off, and our students especially love this night and being able to show up and uh, introduce you to their teachers. And so we hope that you'll still get a feel for our culture and for the um, warmth and, and just the type of environment that we offer at Heron through this open house tonight. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with on a couple slides. And here's a little bit of what's ahead. We have a brief tour I'm gonna put up here soon. Um, and then a word from our head of school, Dr. Holden Flynn. And we're going to introduce you tonight briefly to two other of our campuses. Um, departments each have a little presentation they're going to go through and tell you what they love. They could probably talk for hours about their content, but I've asked them to keep it short. And then athletics and student life, because we know that to be a well-rounded student, uh, it takes more than just academics. We want our students to be involved with other things. And then we'll have the small group Q&A. So that's a little lay of the land. Uh, I'm going to start off with this video that we have put together since we haven't had people on campus, and then we'll go from there. My name is Hala Vaness, here in high school class of 2020, and I'm really excited to take you guys on this tour today. Currently, we're standing in our gallery room, uh, which is a room that we use for large gatherings of people and to meet parents and students. Something that makes this school really unique is that it used to be the Indianapolis Museum of Art. Let's head on upstairs. Here at Heron, another thing that stands out is that we have a really strong focus on academics and a classical education. What this looks like is that all of our students are required to take Latin, as well as in each classroom, we're having scored discussions and Socratic seminars. This means that you are surrounded by peers who look really different from you, but you're able to have amazing conversations and learn about different points of view. We do physics first your freshman year, and then you take chemistry and biology. Your senior year, there are a lot of different science options, including AP options. In fact, we have an open advanced placement policy here at Heron. You don't even have to be on the honors track to take an AP course. In addition to our robust core curriculum, we also have many electives that you can choose to take here, including art, music, theater, journalism, and photography. We're not all about the academics here. Our athletes participate in IHSAA sports, and we also have dozens of clubs, and we always encourage our students to get involved in at least one. With all of these great offerings, as well as the academic support, it's easy to see why we have a 99% graduation rate. Thank you so much for joining me on this tour, and I can't wait to see you guys at Heron High School. All right. Many of you may have seen that. It is on our website. If you care to watch it again, I love watching Hella. She's, she was an amazing student, is now at Butler, and I'm gonna, there we go. I am going to hand it over to our interim head of school, Dr. Tanika Holden Flynn, and she's gonna just talk a little bit about Heron High School and give you an overview about our school. Dr. Holden Flynn, you're on mute. The phrase of the year. Thank you, Ms. House. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you so much for considering us uh, to serve you and your student. 
Um, so I'm sure if you're joining us this evening, you are familiar with our school's background um, as some of our accolades were also just displayed in the video that you just saw. Um, so you probably know that we are an A-rated school um, and that we have been since our school opened 14 years ago. Um, recently, we also just earned a blue ribbon, um, which is quite an honor. We were actually only one of eight schools in the state of Indiana to earn that. Um, and so we are extremely proud of our accolades, right? But we are even more proud of why we earn those accolades. And I can say that that's honestly because every day our faculty and staff come into our building and they give 100% effort. And so let me take that back. So normally it's coming to the building this year, it's either been coming to the building or sit down at their computer at home, um, but they definitely never fail to give 100% of themselves. Um, our teachers are very passionate about the content that they teach. And so they, they definitely find the most engaging ways to transfer all of their knowledge to students. But they don't just teach, uh, they also motivate and inspire. And so at Heron, we don't only graduate students, prepare them for college, but we also develop them to become change agents and world-class citizens. And we also know that it's never too early to begin developing students. So we are extremely excited to be announcing that we are going to be opening our K through eight in the fall of 21. And so as of now, um, our, K our K through eight will be located on the north side of Heron High School in year one. We will be serving grades K through two, and we will be accepting uh, 20 students for each classroom. So there will be two classes of each grade level, K one and two. And we definitely will be leading our students through their curiosity and using that curiosity to help them excel academically. And so we can't wait for that. And I just wanna thank you all for your time this evening. Thank you, Dr. Holden Flynn. I want to also introduce Mrs. Katie Dorsey. She is the head of school at Riverside High School and we are so excited about the things that are happening at Riverside. I'm sure she's going to tell you this, but I'll tell you also, in their first year of earning a letter grade, they earned an A, which is really phenomenal. So I will turn it over to Katie so you can hear about our sister campus. Greetings. Thank you so much, Dr. Holden Flynn and Ms. House for letting me visit with your visitors tonight. And to our guests, I'm very glad to tell you about Riverside. Riverside High School is a second campus of Heron High School. We are in our fourth year, so our seniors, our founding class, will be graduating in May, and we couldn't be more excited. We are, of course, sad to not have them full-time in the building right now, but we are definitely making the most of it. I think the key things I just want you to know, um, first of all, a little bit about the background of the school. Riverside opened four years ago really as an outgrowth of the outsized demand for Heron. Heron has been for over a decade the highest performing public high school in Marion County and we wanted the chance to serve more students. So Riverside became a true replication. We have the same executive leadership, the same departmental leadership over our two campuses. And when we launched four years ago, we actually launched with five founding faculty who actually had developed into being really strong teachers at Heron. And then they felt so passionate about the mission that they wanted to be a part of building a second campus that could serve students in the same way. So there's a lot about our schools that is similar. There are a few things though that are different. And so for families tonight who are hearing about Heron, I first want to invite you to Riverside's open house on the 10th. We'll have a similar evening, but we'll try not to say the exact same thing, even though a lot of the information is the same, but certainly come spread the word and have your friends and family come as well. I think a few of the key things to share, one is the size. Riverside, because of the building we are in, really can only ever be about half the size of Heron. We are located in the restored Hessler Naval Armory, an amazing historic building that sits right at 30th in the White River and has this beautiful waterfront view, is highly accessible from all different points of the city, just like Heron is. And because of that, we've been able to attract the same intentionally diverse population. Our students come from over 90 different sending schools uh, to come to Riverside, and that's only with 430 students. So we celebrate that same diversity that Heron has as well. And then the second really is the faculty that we've been able to have. Because we are a smaller school, many of our teachers um, are teaching the same content year after year. And just one special celebration, we just are able to celebrate that one of our founding, our founding math teachers 
um, was named a Teacher of the Year through the Mayor's Office this year, really as part of that A-rated growth that we've experienced in academic performance. So, so excited for you to come and learn more about Riverside next week at our open house. Really hope we could have you in the campus sometime soon. It's an amazing building that we all are very much in love with. I think um, some of you might know that um, some of the voices you hear from tonight, the department chairs actually teach integrated classes that are both Heron and Riverside students. And so one of the benefits that you have at either of our campuses is that our students get to know one another, take classes with one another, and there really is um, a something special going on at Heron and Riverside High Schools. We are two of the top three performing public high schools in Indianapolis and are so proud to do that. So thanks Ms. House and Dr. Holden Flynn. I'm glad to be able to share a little bit tonight. Thanks for being here, Mrs. Dorsey. It's great to hear from you. All right, we already talked about Heron Preparatory Academy. Super excited about that. We do have info nights um, every week for uh, with a little break in there. If you go to IndianapolisClassicalSchools.org, you'll find information on that. And I'm gonna jump right in with our um, departments right now and introduce to you Mr. Carol Bilberry, and he's going to give you an overview of what it's like to take English and social studies at Heron High School. Good evening, excuse me, good evening everybody. Uh, my name is Carol Bilberry. Um, first of all, I wanna preface this by stating if you hear my kids in the background, uh, it's because it's close to their bedtime and I live in a small house, and so you will likely hear some screaming. Um, so anyway, I've, I'm the Humanities Department Chair, and that means that I oversee uh, curriculum and instructional practice for both the English and the Social Studies Departments at both campuses, Heron and Riverside. Um, if, when you think about Heron High School, um, think about classical education. That is the, the heart of Heron High School, and it's at the heart of the Humanities Department. And when it comes to both English and social studies classes, we really focus on how students think and learn and the process of critical thinking and the process of learning new knowledge. Uh, to do that, we, we ask a lot of questions. We encourage our students to ask a lot of questions. Uh, we do that through something called the Socratic Dialogue, which is a practice of continuous questioning, uh, looking to, for open, uh, discussion with our students to get to maybe not the answer, but an answer. Uh, we encourage our students to, um, to explore a variety of, of discussion paths. Uh, we provide safe and open spaces in our classrooms and in our Zoom classrooms for that discussion. And also related to that, we, we encourage our students to rely on text-based information. Uh, we really believe in the power of text in the textbook. Uh, and we use our textbooks in our, especially in our English classes, to really drive home uh, the, the idea of ev evidence-based writing, of evidence-based discussion. Um, and so, if, Ms. House, if you want to go ahead and go to the next slide, I'll walk you through some of the, the texts that we use in our English department. We're very proud of the, the text list that we have cultivated. Um, and while there might be some changes from year to year, we, we've kind of come to settle on um, this kind of area of a mix of classic texts, uh, dating, sometimes dating back thousands of years, um, and up until to modern texts as well that are considered modern classics. You see in the ninth grade, uh, we, we range from anything from the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the, the first narratives uh, to, be, to be written. Uh, we use Shakespeare's Macbeth, uh, and, and then we end the year with Their Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. And in 10th grade, um, that also includes our pre-AP English class. Uh, again, go back to the classics. We start with um, the Theban plays. We, we look at um, Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew, or they do Julius Caesar in pre-AP English 10. Uh, and then we end the year, uh, sometimes we end with Things Fall Apart, sometimes we end with Tales of Two, Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Um, and it, sometimes it's just the teacher's choice, or sometimes the students get to choose uh, what they want to read. Go ahead, Ms. House. Uh, and then 11th grade, which also includes our AP language and composition class. Uh, we'll, we start with Beowulf. Uh, well, again, Shakespeare you see is a running theme. Every grade level reads a Shakespeare, a work of Shakespeare. Um, and again, another modern classic ending the year with In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. Uh, and in 12th grade, um, 
we have a, a, a nice wide variety of readings. Uh, Plato's The Republic. Uh, one of my favorites, Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, is a, a modern sci-fi classic. Um, and then again, you can see the Shakespeare running through all four years with Othello or Hamlet, depending on if they take uh, AP lit and composition or not. And you can see that we offer both um, advanced placement classes and dual credit. Uh, students can choose to take uh, any of our pre-AP or AP classes in the English department, there is no test in. Um, there is no requirement to take those classes other than a willingness to, to work and to, and to try to earn that college credit. Um, we, in conjunction with Indiana University, we offer a class called W131 slash L202. And at the completion of that course, students do earn college credit that can be used at Indiana University. But we also want to support our struggling students um, that sometimes so students need a little bit of that extra support. And so we have a variety of, of classes, our reading and composition classes. Um, this year we're offering something called college and career readiness for 11th graders. And then we also have our composition class to help with some of our struggling writers as they look to, to leave us in the 12th grade. And then some of our electives you can see there on the right, debate, speech. Um, we have a great speech team. Uh, Critical Inquiry Honors is a class designed by one of our teachers, Mr. Pappas, um, and he really pushes kids to explore uh, just the idea of critical thought, of uh, exploring different uh, maybe ethical questions, a little bit of philosophy in there as well. Uh, and then, of course, we offer a yearbook class, and you can see the cover of last year's yearbook there. Uh, just a couple key highlights for the English department. Um, along with Shakespeare every year, we also ask all of our students uh, four times a year to do an oral recitation. Uh, we believe strongly in that recitation is a key component of any classical education. Uh, we ask our students to uh, recite a passage from some sort of significant literary work. Uh, for example, in 11th grade, <laughs> our students uh, they recite an excerpt from Beowulf in, in Old English. Uh, and no, I'm not going to try to recite that myself. Uh, I did do a little practice leading up to tonight, but I just am not comfortable trying to do the Old English on that one. Um, we believe that recitation is, is a key developer of memory, a key development of, of a foundation of knowledge that can be used later. Um, and we also want our students to be able to, to speak comfortably in public. And, and that's a key part of that. And then um, every year, all of our students, every single one of our students per, um, uh, participates in what's called the fortnightly essay contest. And this goes all the way back to our founding. Uh, it's sponsored by uh, one of the oldest literary clubs in the city, uh, if not the oldest, uh, the Indianapolis Fortnightly Literary Club, which was founded in 1885. Uh, winners are picked from every grade level. Um, they receive a monetary prize. They get to go to a, a fancy luncheon uh, and, and it's, uh, a nice community builder. Um, every student participates, uh, and it's a great way to to bring some enthusiasm to creative writing. As for our social studies department, um, again, with the idea of classical education at the at the heart of, of everything that we do, um, we're also again trying to help students understand uh, change over time, uh, how history uh, has led us to where we are and to our point in time. Uh, we do a lot of focus on using primary sources, so works that were written in that time period from a variety of authors and a variety of points of view. We want our students to use evidence-based arguments. We want them to use uh, those primary sources along with maybe some other secondary sources uh, anytime they're doing any sort of historical writing. Uh, and then, of course, we also push uh, the idea of active citizenship in our classes. Uh, the goal in mind is for our students to leave our high school with a sense of uh, leadership in their community, with um, a, uh, a, a sense of civic duty, a sense of civic pride. Uh, and that's, that's a big focus, not just in our, in our government class or our political science class, but in all of our social studies classes. And then just kind of walk you quickly through uh, the different grade levels in terms of what we offer at the ninth grade. Uh, students can choose between world history and civilizations, or they can take the more advanced class, the advanced placement world history. 
Um, and again, there's no test in. We encourage any student that wants to be challenged, that wants to try to earn that college credit as early as ninth grade to take that AP class. Um, AP goes a little bit more in depth in, in, the, in the world, but they also start a little bit later. Uh, the, the organization that runs Advanced Placement at College Board uh, recently made some changes to that class. And so they don't start actually studying world history until about 1200, um, which uh, was a big change, but we were getting used to it. In the 10th grade, um, we look at uh, a full history of the United States since its founding. Um, AP Uni uh, United States history, again, is a, uh, a more advanced offering with the opportunity to earn college credit at the end. All of our courses, whether it's uh, an AP course or a non-AP course, again, focuses on the use of primary sources, um, a focus on historical writing, uh, making historical arguments, evidence-based arguments. Go ahead, Ms. House. And then at the 11th grade, um, we do our students uh, take US government for a semester and they take uh, economics for a semester or they can choose to take AP United States government for a full year. And then at the 12th grade, uh, our students can choose between a semester of political science and a semester of, uh, of ethnic studies or they can take a full year of AP human geography. And that's all I got for the humanities department, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Bilbrey. I want to introduce uh, Ms. Jillian Pollan. She is going to talk to you about our math department. Hi, everybody. My name is Jillian Pollan. I am the math department chair for Heron and Riverside, and I also get to teach AP Calculus, um, A, B, and B, C for Heron and Riverside. Um, so something really special about ICS is that every scholar takes four years of math. We want to make sure they don't have a gap year between their math at Heron or Riverside and then uh, when they go to college. Um, but students can come in at any level based on what they have taken in middle school or if they're transferring wh what they took at their high school level. And that sequence might be different based on um, what they have taken. So if we'll go to the next slide, we can see uh, our sequence of courses. So it's fairly traditional. We start with Algebra 1 um, and then go to Geometry, Algebra 2, um, and then Pre-Calculus. And then once you hit Pre-Calculus, you can see you have a lot of options. So we have both the non-AP classes, like a traditional calculus and a problem stats finite course. We also offer AP Calculus AB, AP Statistics, and AP Calculus BC. Along with those, we do have support classes. So the Algebra 1 class that supports it is Alex Algebra 1. That is a, a computer program that is individualized to every student to help support uh, their gaps and their understanding. And then the other courses, um, those are taken uh, in tandem with another math class. It's not necessarily the same one. Um, so some students in Algebra Foundations could be in Algebra 2 or Pre-Calc, depending on where they need support. So we have Math 10, Algebra Foundations, and again, that College and Career Readiness course that's a hybrid math and English support class. You can go to the next slide, Ms. House. Um, so our classes are trivium based. And so we talk about uh, the grammar, logic, rhetoric trivium. And so for us, for grammar, that's our number sense, our basic rules and definitions that we learn in math. Um, there is so much logic, all the problem solving that we do. And then of course, the rhetoric, the, rhetoric, the critical thinking and proofs. Um, so our classes are always very interactive. You're never going to come into a math class at Heron and see just a teacher standing up and talking at the students for an hour. So we want to make sure we're doing frequent checks for understanding. A lot of times we use whiteboards. Um, in virtual learning, we use something called Pear Deck to help us, but we're always trying to interact with the students. We do group work and we uh, always want them to share their ideas. We are also mastery focused. So um, we do something called skill-based learning. And so that helps us know exactly where our students' gaps are, things that they might need to remediate, um, ways that we need to support them. And then if we see that our students aren't getting a concept through that mastery-based um, learning, we can reteach it in class and then retest it as well. So we do have a lot of supports for our students. So a lot, we really focus on supporting every student in our classroom. And so the, that check for understanding the interactive learning, we really try to check in with every student and make sure we know what they know and that fuels what we're planning in our lessons. Um, and again, we can spiral back if we need to. 
some students might need more support than what we can give them in the normal traditional classroom. And so we have additional support classes. So they will take that along with the traditional class. So they would be in two math classes. Um, that could be based on their NWEA, their ISTEP scores, or their placement test scores that they take when they come into Heron. Um, so again, those courses, Alex is for students coming into Algebra 1. Uh, math 10 is a sophomore level class that will help prepare them for the graduation requirements exams. Um, and CCR and Algebra Foundations are the upper levels. For all students, we offer office hours. This is a great time for students to come and ask individual questions and get that more individualized support. Um, you can also see in seminars, which are like our study halls, uh, every math teacher that's in a seminar is the most popular person in the room. They are always helping um, any student that has a math question. So a lot of students can get support in seminars as well. We also have many opportunities for our advanced students. So at the Algebra 1 and Geometry levels, we have embedded honors classes. So that means the traditional and the honor students are in the same room, getting um, the quality education from the same teacher. Um, once we get to the Algebra 2 level, we do split into separate sections. And um, like was mentioned before, we don't track our students. So a student could come take honors geometry. That doesn't mean that they have to be in honors algebra two and vice versa. They could enter into the honors level courses at any time. Um, so those honors courses do have a weighted 5.0 GPA. And uh, once we get to the AP classes, so calculus and statistics, students could earn college credit. And that does depend on their AP scores and what schools that they go to. We also offer accelerated summer courses, so students could take geometry, algebra two, or pre-calculus to get ahead. So for example, if a student comes in at algebra one, but they want to be able to take AP calculus before they go to college, they could take geometry over the summer before their sophomore year. Um, some students do max out our classes, and so um, depending on what they have taken, they could also take some college classes through SPAN at IEPUI. Um, we also have the math academic team, which is a great way for students to interact um, with the math curriculum. We learn a lot of creative things. Um, this year, our theme is about um, women in math. And so we're excited to study that and compete later in the spring. Thank you, Ms. Pollan. I want to introduce you now to Mrs. Laura Cummings, who is our science department chairperson. Hi, I'm Laura Cummings. I teach chemistry, AP chemistry at both schools and pre-AP chemistry at Heron High School. And I'm excited to talk to you this evening about the science department. Um, we do a physics first curriculum. At most high schools in the area, you will find that they teach biology first to the freshmen, but we teach physics first to the, to the freshmen. Most students take physics as a freshman, chemistry as a sophomore, biology as a junior, and then science electives as a senior. Next slide. So why physics first? Um, physics is tangible, so the students can actually see and interact with things like inclined planes and springs and circuits and optics as they learn physics concepts. And the um, biology curriculum nowadays is very heavily and excellently faced, uh, based on things like genetics and biochemistry, and that's not so tangible for our freshman students, but our physics they can actually see and touch these things and measure them and see how we can use science to make observations on how the world works. So physics is tangible. Here are some other pictures of the labs that we do. This is the egg drop lab where the students gather in the upper hallway and create little cases to try to shield their egg as they drop it. And the winners manage to have an egg that lands and does not shatter. We also have a Van der Graaff generator, so the students, you can see that her hair is standing up. And we have lots of labs throughout all four years of the science curriculum at Heron High School. The second reason why we teach physics first is because physics, the physics that we teach our freshmen is very much based on algebra. And we've heard so many times, well, why do I need to know this? Why would I need to know algebra? Well, here it is. Here's the reason. And the 
uh, algebra teachers and the physics teachers work together to make sure that they're using the same kind of language and teaching it the same so it's interwoven so the students can see this is a really great reason to know algebra. And the third reason is why physics first. Well, it's because the physics prepares the students for chemistry and biology. So I teach chemistry to sophomores. It is a wonderful thing for me to be able to say, oh, the electromagnetic spectrum. And they go, yeah, we talked about that last year. And I'm like, that is so cool that you know what that is. Because now I get to build on that in chemistry. And then when the students go into biology, they've had an entire year of chemistry. And so they can, um, they have such a much better idea of the chemistry that so much of our modern biology curriculum is based on. So the course sequence at Heron High School, you can see there we have the freshmen. Freshmen either take a course called Integrated Chemistry Physics or ICP or Physics. And the students who need more math support take the Integrated Chemistry Physics. Then as sophomores, uh, the students who took integrated chemistry physics move on into the physics courses. Physics moves on into chemistry. As you can see, um, at the chemistry level, we have separate classes. We have either regular or pre-AP. At the freshman level, our honors class is embedded. And we think that's a real advantage because the students sometimes discover, hey, wow, I'm really good at this and I never would have taken an honors level physics class. Um, and here they are in the embedded class and they start taking it at a different level than they realized they could before. And that's really exciting to see. As juniors, everybody goes into biology, either regular or pre-AP biology. And then you can also have as an elective AP chemistry. And then senior year, you can take ecology anatomy or AP physics, AP biology, AP chemistry, or AP environmental science. Students take four years of science at Heron High School. Um, we have an absolutely Ooh. tremendous faculty in the science department. 100% of our science teachers hold degrees in science. Five have Master of Science degrees and have conducted full-time research, which completely impacts the way that they can address and present things to the students. One faculty member at Riverside has earned a PhD. We have a faculty member who has worked full-time for the Department of Natural Resources, who brings in a wealth of knowledge about nature and biology. And then we have two faculty members who hold degrees in engineering. In the science department. Our science-related clubs are robotics. They actually compete in VEX Robotics. Um, gardening club, you can see that's a recent picture of the garden there because we're all wearing masks. Um, hiking club, chemistry club, academic Super Bowl, and then we have some extracurricular sorts of things like there's a picture of a group at um, Celebrate Science, which happens every year at the fairgrounds. We ran a booth for an entire day. We also have a handful of students that have taken um, internships through the Indiana School of Medicine doing research in labs over the summer, and a couple also worked at uh, Marion University doing some research there. So that's what I have today about, about the science department. Thank you for being here. Excellent. Thank you, Mrs. Cummings. And now I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Jason Kazaya, who is our department chair of World Languages. Good evening. My name is Jason Kazaya. I'm the department chair for world languages for Indianapolis classical schools. I've been with ICS for about a decade now. Started at Heron High School and am now based out of Riverside High School where I teach AP Latin, pre-AP Latin, and Ancient Greek 1. But I am in charge of the department for both schools. You can go ahead and go to the next slide. I'm not going to bore you with too many details tonight. I'm going to try and give you a quick summation of things. Students are required to take four years of world languages when they are in attendance at either Heron or Riverside High School. Freshmen and sophomores are automatically enrolled into Latin. Uh, optionally, they can choose to enroll in French or Spanish concurrently. So if they want to have four years of French or Spanish, more power to them, they can do that as an elective, but they're also going to take Latin for at least two years. Juniors and seniors at that point have a choice of whether or not they want to continue studying Latin with pre-AP and AP Latin. If they want to swap into a different language, either one of the modern languages of French or Spanish, or if they want to take ancient Greek with an asterisk there on enrollment, you can go to the next screen. 
So here is a little diagram showing you the world language sequence. Most people start off in Latin. We offer one, two, pre-AP3, AP4, along with a full range of French and Spanish from year one through year four. And in the future, in the coming years, we're going to transition away from having a French four and Spanish four. We're going to replace those with AP Spanish and AP French. Not yet, but soon. And we also offer ancient Greek in the dialect of Athens for Greek one and Greek two. You can go to the next one. So, Latin. Why? Well, we are called Indianapolis classical schools. When we talk about classical things, we're talking about the classical Mediterranean of Rome and Greece. Latin forms one of the cornerstones of classical education, and it trains students in rigorous analysis and logical thought. You have to think very critically and slowly to be successful at Latin. Latin is the foundation of an entire language family called the Romance languages, named for the Romans who spoke Latin as their language. It includes, still spoken today, all of the daughter languages that are French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, Romanian, and dozens of others whose names you probably don't know that are spoken by about one billion people in the world, either natively or as a second or third language. Latin is very different than English. It uses our alphabet, and we have many words that come from it, but it functions at its core in a different way. It's unfamiliar to us, and that challenges us and makes us better. Go ahead. So children, which you have, and even our seniors who think that they are grown adults because they've hit 18 are still children, they learn languages more easily than adults do. The process of learning a second, third, or more than third language actively rewires the brain of children, enabling faster acquisition, greater flexibility, and deeper fluency. The younger you are when you learn another language, the better you are at every language. The neurological improvements from learning additional languages carry over to other skills and content areas. So by rewiring our brains, we're making them better, and we can apply that flexibility and improvement to math, to English, to science, to art. And speaking of math, math and computer science at their core are simply languages. Math is a language involving numbers. Computer science is literally language. It's programming languages. You learn grammar, you learn syntax, you learn rules. It's just a different language. You can hit the next slide. Travel opportunities. Biannually, our French program runs a tour of Paris and France in the spring. Annually, Indianapolis Classical Schools runs a cultural exchange program with Instituto Independencia, a school in Tlaxcala, Mexico, southeast of Mexico City, ranging from two-week trips where we send students there for two weeks, they hang out, are immersed in the culture, stay with families of students at the school, and then we reverse the situation a few months later where the students that hosted ours come and visit with us and are housed by our faculty our parents and our staff. And in the past, we have also sent students to Tlaxcala for an entire semester for deeper immersion and greater Spanish learning. And this coming summer, uh, Zeus willing, uh, the Latin program will also lead a study abroad tour of Italy and Greece with plans to repeat that biannually as well. But we shall see if that happens. But that's the plan right now. You can go to the next slide. I'm done, and I'm going to turn this over to the next person, but students learn language. It's good for them. If you have any more questions, I can answer them later. Thank you, Mr. Kazaya, and I'm with you. I hope that trip happens. And now I want to introduce Mr. Trevor Renwick, who is the chair of our Fine Arts Department. Good evening, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, speaking of things that are good for us, the fine arts, the heart and soul of our school really is. Next slide, slide please. 
We didn't give you a course sequence because there are just so many different avenues to explore. So some of the main disciplines would be theater, and we have for extroverts, the acting. Um, and for those who are interested in it, but maybe not so willing to get on stage, um, they are critical role helping with the technical field, theater department. We have multiple choirs, um, and we have been able to perform all over the city, um, even internationally into Lexicala. We have dance program that is continuing to build beginning advanced dance classes that focus on technique, um, but also because we are a classical school, really pushing that historical component um, so that we're learning the history of it as well. Instrumental music. Um, Ooh, man. Oh. Instrumental music, uh, the jazz program is building and we have full jazz orchestra, wind ensemble, piano, and we have some 2D visual art, some drawing, painting, photography, um, and all these lead up into a lot of um, opportunities for AP art classes in the arts. Speaking of, would be AP art design, both 2D and drawing uh, and 3D, um, and AP art history uh, and AP music theory, and some preparatory classes for music theory. Um, so great opportunities. Next slide, please. Critical thinking and creative problem skills. Really, that's what we're here to do um, for all of our schools, that classical mission. I think a lot of parents out there are probably um, thinking, I hope my child does not want to go become a professional painter in New York City. Um, we were obviously would support them if that's what they wanted to do here, but what we really have to offer every student, whether they want to be a doctor, whether they want to be an engineer, a scientist, or even a librarian, is the ability to stretch and build their critical thinking and creative problem solving. So studying the fine arts helps students to develop these skills um, really by giving them um, unsolvable problems. There is no right answer. It's not always if you do this and this, voila, it's great art. So getting them to reflect on their own understanding, their own experiences, and how they're processing the world around them to give us something that is uniquely their own and helps to build the beauty and the culture that we have in this country. Next slide, please. Exploration of timeless ideas and content. Um, we are very lucky to have history documented by the arts. And again, that's in the music, that's in the visual arts, in the theater, um, all the disciplines were able to really show those. Another great thing about Heron High School is that uh, most teachers will also bring some of these arts into their classes to help enrich their other curriculum too. Um, so we're really learning about the, uh, the classical world, but we wanna make sure that we're giving students the opportunity to explore how the classical ideals help to shape Western society and also some of the similarities and differences to cultures outside of Western civilizations. So they have a more holistic idea of human evolution and how the arts and um, expression of identity and many other things are really pushed in in these arts. So we really want to put an emphasis on diversity and use the contemporary artwork, which most students seem to relate to a little bit more, to help them take ownership of the content and gain a true understanding of the history of art. Next slide. Mr. Renwick, did you already tell folks that these were all student created artwork? That I did not. I'm so sorry. I'm so used just, to seeing that. I don't that. want people to pass that up because they're phenomenal. I appreciate you reminding us. Yes, I, I see it all the time. So I'm, I'm still surprised, but we have all student work in the presentation. And if you come to Heron High School, um, it's all student artwork in the building too. So um, don't tell them, but a lot of our students should not be able to be this good, but it's because of the support that they receive from home and also the teachers and ultimately the hard work um, that they are putting into it which goes into this. You probably weren't expecting a Vince Lombardi quote from the Fine Arts Department Chair, but this is a great one. And that's perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. That I would wish that was our school motto, um, our life motto, because that's really what we're about here. It's just practicing makes better. Um, whether students beginning or advanced, they're going to um, have to put in the time and they're gonna notice that they are improving. And a really great thing about the arts is that students are able to, in an artwork, they're able to visualize this in a piece of music. We can hear that. So from the beginning of a semester to the end of the year, um, it is very evident how much the students have grown. And in so many cases, students have said, wow, if I can do that, I can do better in my science class. I can do better in my math class because I understand that if I just work and I receive feedback um, that I'm going to be able to develop my focus, have a stronger work ethic, and be successful in whatever field of study that they choose. Um, students are creating these documents. We're doing performances across the city. Um, we're stuck virtually for now, but we're still creating um, and really just trying to get them to um, devote their time and their passion to something that they believe in. Next slide. 
So exposure to cultural diversity in the art history timeline, which we mentioned in previous slides, but I just really want to push that is that we spend a significant amount of time studying and exploring creativity across diverse cultures and time periods. So not only do we want diverse cultures, Western, Eastern, um, all around the world, but really that development and the connection to their own lives. It can be very difficult for a student who has not had much exposure to the arts to appreciate a cycladic artwork from ancient Greece. But when they understand how that helped to evolve and shape into other things, they can understand how it all ties together and gain a better appreciation and really a deeper knowledge on not only the arts, but culture and humanity in general. Next slide. Um, we all know we're, we're all struggling on a good day right now. Um, and I am very thankful for the privilege of being an art teacher right now um, because this creative energy and destructive energy come from a similar place. And students who are invested in the fine arts, they have an outlet right now. Um, we're making a big effort to continue to focus on those timeless pieces and the diverse cultures, but we're really making an effort to ask the students, how are you feeling? What's going on with you right now? What do you dream for yourself? What are you scared about? Um, and we're giving them opportunities to develop their technical skills um, and merge those with those conceptual skills so they can really try to explore who they are and how they fit in this world. Um, and I think we can all agree we definitely need that right now. Thank you, Mr. Renwick. I really appreciate that. Okay, we're going to transition from our academic piece to our student life piece. And I believe first I'm going to introduce Miss Joanna Wiggins, and she's our athletic director. So she's going to give a little overview about our sports program. Hi, everybody. Uh, like Miss House said, I am Joanna Wiggins, the athletic director at Heron High School. I'm super excited to see you guys. I'm super excited to welcome you guys to our sports programs. I always start this presentation out with saying that, yes, we do have sports. Um, whereas we're known in the city for our academics, our sports program is really phenomenal. And I'm super passionate about having scholar athletes. Uh, we call them scholar athletes on purpose because we support our scholars first. Uh, and we're athletes second. So we support them in the classroom. Uh, we're very uh, hands-on with our teachers to make sure that our athletes are not only uh, some of the top performing in, this, in the city, but also top performing in academics. You can kind of see on this slide um, that we have so many things to choose from. Uh, in our fall season, we which we just ended, and we did have a full fall season during COVID, which was so crazy, um, but so rewarding as well. We had boys soccer, girls soccer, we have girls volleyball, boys and girls cross country, and also boys tennis. We're transitioning pretty quickly to winter where we have boys basketball, girls basketball, cheer, uh, and boys and girls swimming. In the springtime, we move on to boys baseball, girls softball, girls tennis, boys and girls track, and also boys volleyball. Um, in addition to this, we also partner with many programs in the city, so you don't see football on here, and you probably won't see that anytime soon, um, but we do work with affiliate programs in the city if there is something that you're passionate about that we don't have. Um, another one of those besides football would be rowing. We also have had kids um, work with Marion to do some of their cycling programs. So if we don't offer it, we will uh, find an avenue for your student athlete um, to participate if that's something that they're passionate about. Um, my goal here at Heron is to to make sure that your students, when you step into Heron High School, that you're getting a well-rounded experience. You should not have to sacrifice uh, sports. If that's something you're passionate about, we have opportunities for you. We have phenomenal programs. Um, across the board, we have had sectional championships. We have kids moving on to semi-states. We have kids in regionals. And one thing that I am super, super passionate about is that and excited about is I've been at Heron for 11 years and I've been part of almost every single historical moment. Um, 14 years of being open seems like a long time, but it really isn't that long. Um, and so I've been able to watch our student athletes just uh, excel in sports with um, not always the easiest of circumstances. And, and they're just, they're just phenomenal. We, uh, when you come to Heron High School and you participate in our sports program, you are going to be part of making history for our school. Every record, every trophy, every sectional win, um, those are things that have not been created yet. Some of them have not been created yet. And so when you send your students here, I think that's one of the best things about our program is that it's still pretty young and we are still, uh, you know, making waves in our city and our athletic program. Um, 
So I'm super excited to meet you guys. And I want, I always tell everybody if you're a, if you're in eighth grade right now and you're getting ready to uh, apply, if you get accepted at our school, just a little PSA, we start our athletic programs in June. Um, so do not wait until uh, our school starts or you'll be behind. Uh, we start in June. So just make sure that once you get accepted, you are keeping your eyes peeled on Twitter. You're following us on our um, athletic pages. Uh, so that we can meet you uh, as soon as, you know, we get started. Um, so once again, go Achaeans. I'm excited to meet you guys. I'm going to pass it on to uh, our clubs and activities. Actually, I have a question for you, Mrs. Wiggins. Where do our teams practice? I don't see any athletic fields on our campus. Yes, I get that question a lot. Um, so whereas that seems so crazy, and it is, and I always wish that we have our own facilities, it's actually really part of our school mission to partner with our community members. And so that's what we do. Uh, we work very, very closely with the Indy Parks Department, and we host a lot of our competitions at Indy Parks facilities. Uh, we've had such an amazing relationship with them. And a lot of these pictures that you see are going to be at O'Bannon Fields or Coons Memorial Stadium or Municipal Gardens. Uh, we try to make it as consistent as possible. Um, so most of our indoor sports are going to be at Municipal and most of our outdoor sports are going to be over at Coons Stadium. We also, uh, you'll see up in the right top corner, a beautiful picture of the Riverside Gymnasium. Uh, we're so fortunate to be able to use that gym sometimes. Um, and then we also partner up with IPS to use some of their facilities. So you probably wonder where we're swimming. Uh, we swim at Arsenal Tech and we, we just collaborate and we we make it happen and it's uh it's actually a really beautiful thing to be able to partner with these community members thank you you're welcome now we will turn it over to our assistant heads of school who do much more than extracurriculars but they that is a portion of their job and they do a great job of uh, helping our students get involved in the school and the student life so i'm going to hand it over to mr westerfeld and ms klinger um, I first just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Rochelle Klinger. Um, I've been with the school for 10 years uh, and love doing this job. Um, I'm working on organizing the breakout rooms we'll be going into, so I'm going to let Mr. Westerfeld um, talk about these things, but nice to see you all. And I am Atticus Westerfeld. I am the assistant other has assistant head of school here at Heron High School. Um, and I have been here with the school since uh, 2007, so quite a long time. Um, it's the place I love. And uh, part of that is the, the, the culture that we built at our school. Um, and extracurriculars and, and student life is a big part of, um, of what we create as a community for our students. Um, and so part of that is uh, our club offerings. Uh, if you're interested in seeing a, a full list of our club offerings, um, you can visit that tinyurl.com slash Heron Clubs. Um, we have uh, around 50 clubs at any given time. They kind of move and, uh, you know, uh, are created or, or go away depending on our, our student life and what our students are wanting to, to start. Um, and so you can see a full list there. Um, we have leadership groups um, that are available for students, class officers, uh, National Honor Society, and uh, a very unique uh, Heron uh, organization is our Achaean 80. Um, you'll have, we have Achaean 80 members here tonight who are helping out, uh, who are going to talk about um, what it's like to be a Heron student with you guys. Um, and that's part of what they do. They are our ambassadors, they are our leaders in our classrooms, in our hallways, in our lunchrooms. Um, making sure that Heron is, is made a better place. Um, and that's how we see them as, as really change makers in our, in our school um, to always improve what we do. Um, I love what Mr. Renwick said about, uh, about chasing perfection and finding excellence. Um, that's absolutely what I think uh, is, is a hallmark of our school as well. And so those uh, Akeen 80 members uh, always are, are finding ways to make our school better and making it a better experience for our students. And we love that about them. Uh, we have dances uh, also available at our school. We have three main um, dances. Uh, we have our, uh, our homecoming. We also have a, uh, a winter formal, uh, in, usually in January, February. Um, and then we also have our um, dance in the spring, which is prom for uh, upperclassmen. Um, and we also have Riley Dance Marathon in the spring for all students. Um, which is available as a one of our uh, really really vibrant uh, clubs that raises a lot of money for the Riley uh, Hospital. Um, we have concerts, musicals, plays along with our um, arts department. Um, a big part of that is a uh, a big program in the spring in April. Um, we have our arts and food truck festival, 
um, Ms. Wiggins and our arts department with Mr. Renwick um, work together and collaborate and create uh, just an amazing festival atmosphere with food trucks um, every April to raise funds for the art for the uh, athletics department. Um, and so that's a great experience and, and really a unique Karen um, event. Also along with athletics is another part of our student life, which I'm really, really sad that we didn't have the experience of this year, um, is our uh, Heron faculty versus students soccer game, um, which is our homecoming game at the school. Um, that happens every October. Uh, sadly, this year did not occur, um, but once we're uh, back on the field, we'll, we'll be beating the students again, I'm sure, like we did last year. Um, and so uh, we have a great, well-rounded uh, experience for our students, um, and, and they are able to kind of participate in lots of different ways at our school in addition to athletics. Um, there's also lots of academic uh, programs, which uh, Ms. Cummings talked about a little bit, um, but each of our departments has some, uh, some extra curricular activities um, that we also encourage through our clubs uh, clubs page as well if you want to check that out. Thank you Mr. Westerfeld. All right um, I am going to put her on the spot here she's not expecting this at all um, but I am going to ask Mrs. Briggs if she is on this call which I believe she is. Um, we have we are not going to spend a lot of time tonight uh, talking about college and career counseling, but we have a special night just for that because there's so much information to cover. I have just put the logos of the Indiana schools um, that our kids most mostly go to. Um, I included University of Cincinnati. I will be completely honest because this is Hasper's son and my son go there, but I just, I point it out because um, they give Marion County students in-state tuition. So it's almost like it's an Indiana school and they have a, an amazing co-op program there. And then I kind of went from east to west where our kids have gone, um, trying to show you a little bit of what the kind of the, the variety of schools our students go to. Um, small liberal arts schools, Ivy League schools, large state schools that are out of state, historically black colleges and universities. And um, I, I know I called out Mrs. Briggs. If you are on here, Mrs. Briggs, is there anything you would like to say about the guidance or career counseling, college and career counseling department while we have you here briefly? Can you guys hear me okay? I didn't know if I <laughs> unmuted myself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shelby Briggs. I'm the director of counseling for um, both Heron High School and Riverside High School. Um, we have an amazing college and career curriculum here. Um, we have licensed school counselors for every grade level, and we do have a director of college and career counseling as well. Um, we kind of all work together to make it the best experience to help you kind of uncover what you want to do, where you want to go, all that fun stuff. We have programming for every single grade, um, you know, starting off with um, kind of freshman year, a big, you know, get to know yourself, get to know your peers activity. That's called Heron 101. Uh, sophomore year, we do a sophomore college road trip. Um, it's going to look a little different this year because of circumstances, but typically we take students to visit two different colleges, big bus tour. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Mr. Westerfeld goes to IU every year, right, Mr. Westerfeld? <laughs> and then um, junior year, we do go to the um, National College Convention that's downtown. Um, we take everybody there. Seniors all go to um, Senior College Visit Day. And then we use Naviance. Um, there are tons of free resources that are on there um, that help you uncover your strengths, help match you with colleges. Um, but we really partner alongside of you the whole time. Um, and again, our licensed school counselors are available for all grades. Um, we're here to help you personal, social, college, career, and academics, just to coach you and you know, partner alongside of you. I'm just really excited uh, to get to know you guys and um, all of our students. It's, it's a great program. Thank you, Mrs. Briggs, especially when that was not part of the plan tonight and she just jumped in. So I appreciate that. But I think it's important for folks to hear from you guys. Uh, oh, sorry. We I'm sorry about that. Um, tonight or on June, oh my gosh, hello, November 18th, we have a special night with our resource team. 
And so if you have a student that has an IEP or um, you just want to learn what our special education, what we call resource department is all about, we would love to have you sign in on November 18th. The sign up is online and uh, you can meet our team there and ask them any questions. Um, for the sake of time, we are going to, we have um, some students on our call right now. And students, if there is anything you are absolutely dying to say about any of the content that was shared tonight, will you, I see Balin has raised their hand. And um, so Ms. Klinger, can you unmute Balin? And um, Balin, I'm gonna have you. But I can, yeah. What's that? She should be able to, but I can. Okay, um, so we have two students I'm gonna just call on to share, and then we're going to go into breakout rooms. You will have one faculty, staff member, and one student with you. So if you have any questions, uh, we'll be able to do that. Before I go with that, I just want to introduce, um, before we go to students, I wanna introduce Mrs. Hasper and um, she is going to tell you a little bit about enrollment. Hi everyone, my name is Shannon Hasper. I'm the Director of Enrollment at Heron High School and I'm so excited that you have joined us tonight. This is one of the most exciting nights of the year where we get to meet all of our prospective families. Enrollment is now open and closes, round one closes January 29th. You do not have to hurry and enroll as soon as we are done with our open house. Um, you have until January 29th. Make sure that when you go ahead um, and start filling out your application, if you do, if you only want hair in high school, then you might want to only put hair in high school. It will give you up to 10 choices to go ahead and put down. You do not have to put 10 choices. Um, the link is right there. It's just enrollindy.org. It's a pretty, um, pretty simple application, but if you ever have any questions or need some assistance while you are filling it out, <clears throat> feel free to either email me or give me a call. I would love to walk you through it over the phone. And um, we, at this time, we are not doing shadow um, visits on our campus, and we're so sad about that. But what we would like to do is when we are done with tonight, if there is a question that you did not get to ask or something that comes up, feel free to email enrollment at heronhighschool.org. And we would love to put you in touch with one of our current students um, via email to, um, to answer that question. So I think right now, I think we're gonna go ahead. Ms. House, do we have some questions for our students? I did just want to, Balin had a, her hand okay. raised too. I would love to hear from Balin about whatever it was that was on her mind. Yeah, okay, so going back to like the music department, if your kids or one of the students here are interested in joining orchestra, we do take this trip to Kings Island, which we get to play there. And it's a really fun trip. I went there and the price for the tickets were really cheap last year. I think they were $40. And even if you can't afford them, you could get a scholarship from the teacher, Ms. Benzel, and you could go for free. It's a really great opportunity. Plus, Ms. Benzel, the orchestra teacher, she's really sweet. She's a great teacher. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. That's awesome. Thanks for your input. And I noticed somebody else had their hand raised, but I'm not sure who it was. Anybody, any other student that had their hand raised that I'm missing? I don't know that it was a current student. I okay. think All right. So at this time, we are going to go into breakout rooms um, where you can ask a student or a faculty and staff member any question you may have. Um, if you don't have any questions, at that time, you are welcome, obviously, to, to end the session. And as far as faculty and staff members, again, you don't have to come back to this large room. When you're finished, just bid your participants farewell and have a good night. And I just, on behalf of the entire school, want to thank you all for giving us this time tonight and hope that we will see you in person soon.